With winds higher than 70 km per hour, Tropical Storm Julia hits northeastern Colombia. Central America prepares for Julia's arrival. Brazil's presidential campaign continues. Candidate Lula da Silva holds a mass rally in Campina in the state of Sao Paulo. And in Russia, authorities provide details on the attack on the Crimean bridge that left at least three people dead. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In the Caribbean, tropical storm Julia threatens the Colombian islands of San Andres and Providencia as it moves towards the coast of Nicaragua. The Institute of Hydrology and Environmental Studies and the National Unit for Disaster Risk Management of Colombia issue a maximum hurricane alert for the archipelago of San Andres, Providencia and Santa Catalina for the arrival of the tropical depression given the increase in its speed and the direction it is moving. Authorities reiterated to the residents of the island of San Andres that they should stock up and take care and precautionary measures before the arrival of the weather phenomenon. Throughout the Colombian Caribbean coast, an increase in clouds and rainfall is expected, accompanied in some cases by thunderstorms and strong winds. The government of Nicaragua also raised the level of surveillance throughout its eastern coast, awaiting the arrival of the storm this Sunday. The national government takes preventive actions to guarantee the protection of lives and goods. So far, maritime authorities are engaged in the evacuation of families from risk areas in view of the forecast of floods. In Chile, a fire consumed about 20% of the monument known as the Moai Statues on Easter Island. The origin of the fire is presumably caused by an Asian island practice of burning the land before agricultural planting is under investigation. This time, the flames got out of control and reached the quarry, where the Moais were built hundreds of years ago. The damage to the archaeological statues is still invaluable and, according to the island's authorities, irrecoverable. The fires exposed the pro precarious situation of the island of Rapa Nui, which, although far from Latin America, belongs to Chile. No permanent fire control brigade and lack of resources denounce the island authorities. The prison crisis in Ecuador is worsening and more than 400 inmates have been killed between 2021 and 2022, after the violence registered this week. According to authorities, at least 402 citizens deprived of freedom have been murdered in the last two years after the violence events reported in the prisons, indicated that with two massacres in the last week, they would add to eight previous ones since February 2021. In this context, the government assured that to have plans to reduce prison violence in view of the fact that, that to date more than eight violent events have been reported inside several penitentiary centers of the country. The second humanitarian summit was held in Colombia to seek political and negotiated solutions to the armed conflict. During the summit, the urgent actions that must be implemented to achieve a multilateral humanitarian ceasefire and achieve peace will be made known. It is a space for meeting and social consultation in which nearly 200 leaders from the 14 territories most affected by violence will participate. The summit is accompanied by spaces and working groups that converge in a group known as the Humanitarian Co Coordinator as well as other territorial processes. Venezuela remembered this on Friday, 10 years since the triumph of Commander Hugo Chavez in the presidential elections of October 7, 2012, the election in which the people of Venezuela renewed their support to the Bolivarian leader and to the political project he represented, with more than 55% of the preference expressed in more than 8 million votes. The campaign ended in these elections was an emotional dialogue between the historic leader whose illness did not dull his gift as an exceptional popular communicator in a country that recognized him as the leader of the process of the structural transformations that throughout 14 years was reflected in all the social indicators of the country.
In Brazil, the presidential campaign continues. Candidate Luis Inácio Lula da Silva carries out a mass rally in Campinas in the state of Sao Paulo. According to local media, hundreds of citizens who support candidate Lula da Silva accompanied in this rally by former Governor Geraldo Armin of the coalition Brasil da Esperanza and former Mayor Fernando Haddad take part in the walk that started in Largo do Para and continued to Largo do Rosario, where Lula da Silva is expected to deliver a speech to the audience. The deputy mayor of Campinas, who expressed his support for the Workers' Party's candidate, also participates in this event. Lula's visit to the city of Campinas takes place within the framework of the campaign for the re presidential runoff to be held on October 30th. Let's take a short break, but first, remember you can now follow us on TikTok at the account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Russian authorities stated a truck explosion caused a large fire on the bridge linking Russia and Crimea, with at least three people killed in the explosion. According to the Anti-Terrorism Committee, the blast set fire to seven old tankers being carried by rail to Crimea. They also informed that two sections of the bridge partially collapsed. Authorities confirmed the fire has now been extinguished. However, even though traffic has resumed in a limited manner, trains are delayed with the ferry service expected to begin operations later on Saturday. Russian transport ministry stated the extent of damage from the explosion is not fully clear yet, but a criminal probe into the event is underway. The investigative committee has opened a criminal case after an incident on the Crimean Bridge. According to preliminary information, a truck exploded on the automobile part of the Crimean Bridge from the side of the Taman Peninsula in the morning today, which caused seven fuel tanks to ignite on a train heading towards the Crimean Peninsula. As a result, two lanes partially collapsed. The spokeswoman of the Russian investigative committee, Svetlana Petrenko, confirmed that a team was sent to the site to determine the causes of the incident. Forensic specialists have been sent to the site. The investigative committee will establish all the circumstances of the incident and the people connected to the crime. Spokeswoman of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Maria Sakharova, condemned the reaction of the Kiev regime to the partial destruction of the Crimean Bridge. The Russian official said during an interview that the reaction of Kiev's regime reflects its terrorist nature. Following that, Mikhail Podolyak, advisor to the Ukrainian presidential office, tweeted that the detonation on the bridge in Crimea is the beginning and assured that everything illegal must be destroyed. In turn, Ukrainian National Defense and Security Council Secretary Oleksiy Danilov posted a video of the fire after the explosion on the Crimean bridge with a photo of Marilyn Monroe wishing good morning to Ukraine. Other Ukrainian government agencies and officials joined the celebration of the terrorist act. The IMF executive board provided some 1.3 billion US dollars to Ukraine, the country's president Volodymyr Zelensky informed on his Twitter account. The aid is provided on the rapid financing instrument that provides assistance to member countries facing an urgent balance of payments need. The information was made known by President Volodymyr Zelensky, who thanked the organization for its contribution. In March, the IMF approved 1.4 billion US dollars in emergency financial assistance for that nation. China's foreign minister demanded the United States to stop political manipulation of humanitarian issues at the closing of the 51st session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Beijing on Friday rejected attempts to stain the country's image, prevent its development, spread lies, and tried to use the United Nations Human Rights Council as a tool to interfere in the internal affairs of the Asian giant. In this regard, China urged the United States to focus on its problems of racism, discrimination, gun violence, and mistreatment of immigrants, and reaffirmed its call to Washington to stop political manipulation and misinformation about human rights in the Asian country.
The ambassador of Venezuela to the UN in Geneva, Hector Constant Rosales, rejected the draft resolution on Burundi considering that it does not contribute to the protection of human rights in the African country. Venezuela opposes draft resolution L23. We reject this unbalanced intervention and totally politicized draft resolutions, which reaches uh, the long standing siege against Burundi, which will soon reach a decade. There is no valid basis for renewing the mandate of a special uh, rapporteur imposed on it, other than the intention of the sponsors of this initiative to continue to use human rights as a political instrument for the purpose of producing reports against the country that are drafted from sources that don't enjoy credibility. The special reporter whose mandate is to be renewed doesn't have the support of Burundi and will not be of any benefit to the protection of human rights. In the United Kingdom, thousands of supporters of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange protested outside Parliament on Saturday as they demand the government to cancel plans to extradite him to the United States. Activists led by Julian's wife, Estella Assange, gathered outside the British Parliament in support of the journalist who is currently being held in a British maximum security prison awaiting extradition. Assange's U.S. supporters also demonstrated near the Department of Justice in Washington, where they demanded the Biden administration cancel plans to try the journalists on hacking charges and 17 counts of violation of violating the Espionage Act. If convicted, Assange faces up 175 years in prison. In Spain, the civil guard managed to break up a gang suspected of smuggling Albanian migrants to the United Kingdom, hidden as stowaways aboard ferries and merchant ships. During the operation carried out in cooperation with the National Crime Agency of Great Britain, agents arrested seven suspects, all Albanian members of a major criminal organization. The civil guard detailed that among the detained migrants were some minors who were hidden on the dangerous conditions that pose a risk to the life or physical integrity of the citizens. The two alleged leaders of the group were arrested on Monday as they were about to board a flight at Madrid airport to Albania. More news coming up after the financial break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Two Palestinians were shot dead in the occupied city of Jenin in Palestine on Saturday, the Palestinian Health Ministry said, as Israeli troops carried out an arrest operation. Eleven others were wounded, three of them seriously, the ministry added. This latest confrontation has made 2022 the deadliest year of violence in the occupied territory in nearly a decade. The official Palestinian news agency, Wafa, reported Israeli forces fired directly at journalists during the raid. The Israeli army has launched frequent and often deadly raids in Jenin and other parts of the West Bank in recent months, often targeting Palestinian militants. Dozens of Palestinians have been killed, including fighters and civilians. Journalist Sherin Abu Akleh was shot dead in May while covering an Israeli raid in Jenin. Syrian foreign ministry authorities condemned the blatant plundering of its mineral resources, especially oil, by United States forces in the northeastern part of the Arab nation and demanded compensation for the losses. Through a statement, the foreign ministry stated that these practices of the U.S. military are despicable and constitute an act of true piracy, as well as an attempt to return to colonial times. Likewise, it recalled that these actions violate international law and the United Nations Charter. The Syrian government urged the UN Security Council to condemn and to stop these actions. This statement also demanded the US immediately withdraw its forces illegally present in Syrian territory and cease its support to terrorists and mercenaries. A bus caught fire after hitting a truck on a highway in western India early Saturday, killing at least 11 passengers. Another 24 people were injured and taken to a hospital in Nashik, a city in Maharashtra state, said Eknath Shinde, the top state elected official. 
Most passengers were sleeping when the bus caught fire at around 5 a.m. local time and the vehicle was completely burned. She they added that the cause of the fire is being investigated. Nashik is nearly 200 kilometers northeast of Mumbai, the capital of Maharashtra. Hundreds of thousands of people are killed or injured annually on India's roads. Most accidents are blamed on reckless driving, poorly maintained roads and aging vehicles. The UN's World Health Organization issued an alarming response to the death of children in Gambia, saying it had been working with the government to investigate the cause of the cases and deaths. WHO has today issued a medical product alert for four contaminated medicines identified in the Gambia that had been potentially linked with acute kidney injuries and 66 deaths among children. The loss of these young lives is beyond heartbreaking for their families. The four medicines are cough and cold syrups produced by Maiden Pharmaceuticals Limited in India. WHO is conducting further investigation with the company and regulatory authorities in India. While the contaminated products have so far only been detected in the Gambia, they may have been distributed to other countries. On Friday, Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari presented the 2023 budget before Parliament and expressed his hope that the next government will be able to put in place key reforms necessary to address inflation and slow economic growth. Rise benchmark of 70 United States dollars per barrel. B, daily oil production estimate of 1.69 million barrels, inclusive condensates, and of 300,000 to 400,000 barrels per day. 2023 budget proposal is the eighth and final budget of this administration. It reflects the serious challenges currently facing our country, key reforms necessary to address them, and imperatives to achieve higher, more inclusive, diversified, and sustainable growth. We have come to the end of this news program. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesor English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.